Okay, lesson number one from Nat Riddles. It's the first thing he told me on a day in May 1985 when he came to my apartment for my first lesson. First thing he said, he sort of wanted me to play, and I, I don't know what I played. Probably had a C harp. Let me get the C harp. You know what he said? Open your hands. Open your hands. Now, I, I like to take that on a literal level. Literally, don't have all of the, don't have all of the uh, sound trapped in there. But I also like to think of that on a metaphorical level. And I'm going to ask you to take it on the surface and a deeper level. So we're going to learn how important it is to open the hands but also kind of to sit up. Nat had great posture. He was a dancer. He was a uh, Taekwondo. Was, my son does, interestingly enough. Crazy that that would happen. He was a martial artist, a dancer. So he had really, he had sort of good posture. He'd sit up, get the shoulders back. Because, you know, when you're a harp player, can you see me hunching over? That, that's sort of an occupational hazard for harp players and scholars. Just always curved over. It is important to know that that, and, and so we're all familiar with the, the, the harp player, even the William Clarks bending down to the floor. Well, that will happen. You will bend down to the floor. But it's important to look up and look out. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of learning how to perform as a harp player is about learning how to get past fear. Fear of exposure. Fear of everybody thinking you suck. Fear of judgment. Sometimes we judge ourselves really harshly when everybody else actually is, they'd be kind of cool with what you're doing. Um, side note on that, by the way, if you play somewhere and you don't think you did that well, but somebody comes up and says, thank you, that was great. I really enjoyed that. You know what you need, you know what the, the proper answer to that is? It's not, well, I could have done better, I, but nor is it, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. You know what the proper answer is? Thanks. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, that's the proper answer. Allow somebody to feel moved by what you did, even if you think it sucks. I know that's a hard one. It's been a hard one for me, because I'm so self-critical, and I always think I could have done better, usually. And if you, if you actually really knocked it out of the park, my son will say, yeah, I'm, I'm bad, you know, I'm the best. Just say thanks. Just say thanks. So open your hands. Well, now here's the, here, every lesson that I teach, certainly the Nat Riddles lessons, probably has a corollary, or probably the opposite is also true. So, one of the most remarkable tones in contemporary blues harmonica is Phil Wiggins, in terms of just having an acoustic sound, and he traps the sound, so he actually keeps his hands really notably cupped, and gets an incredible... He gets it really, a really cool sound, but he also knows how to open. So what does open the hands mean? Well, first of all, it means having a grip that will allow you to open your hands. So if this is your grip, it means being aware of, of the fact that your hands might be closed. So this is what the, open your hands is partly about awareness, giving you a few more options for just sort of uh, decisions you could be making. Now, I play a lot with a mic, and I would say that the occupational hazard of players who mostly play amplified through amps, the occupational hazard is that they forget, because most of the time they're not opening up using the mic, but that's actually an incredibly effective thing. Now, I don't have the mic here, but, but Believe me, the best amplified players know how to open up to thin the sound and then close it down to thicken the sound. But let's assume we're playing acoustically. Now, I hold the harp, and I'm not going to talk about how I hold it. I'm just saying I hold it this way, not this way. There's two different ways. I hold it the minority way, with 5% maybe of players hold it this way. Um, I don't hold it like this, except when I'm playing on a vocal mic and I want to be able to make these sounds, because I want to be able to open it more easily. But let's say we're using my grip. All that Nat was saying in Open Your Hands is don't hold back. 
And this is one thing you'll find. There's two kinds of harp players. One kind is totally disinhibited. Do you know what that means? It means they're just ripping it open and letting it out. Sort of the Janis Joplin version of the blues. That's one way of doing it, which is they're just too loud um, and usually not very good. And then there are the players, and, and you might be in this category, and I think I was in some way, even though I was out walking down the street playing. And this kind of player just doesn't even realize the hands in front or is subtly, psychologically, for, subtle, for psychological reasons, not really quite opening it up and making it big. So open, open your hands means be aware of how much dynamic range you have in volume terms. Your options from being really quiet to really loud and wide open. And don't just always flatten it into one place. Open it up. Now, I'll be honest, that was my first lesson. I don't think I've ever really learned it in terms of really attending quite enough because I play amplified. There's always a mic there. I don't tend to really make as much use of that as some players do. Ronnie Shellis is a good example of somebody who really does. Sugar Blue, when he gets off the, the ampli amplification and plays acoustically on a vocal mic, has incredible open your hands technique. Incredible. So, and Phil Wiggins, of course, with the cupping it way down. So experiment, go all the way down and then all the way open. Especially when you're playing quietly. Here's an old Satan and Adam tune that I, I wrote the melody for this part. Mr. Cantrell. You can find a solo version of that on uh, Kick and Stomp, my album. Open your hands. Open the space to let out the sound you're making. Open your soul to let that sound out. All right, open your soul. So I'll leave you with the final thought. Do you sometimes feel, by the way people are talking about the blues, that you don't have a right to play it? Has anybody ever made you ashamed for playing the blues or liking the blues? It's interesting. Um, it's interesting how this works. I think in, in African-American communities, um, believe it or not, there have been periods of time where blues is really not, it's not popular. Nobody particularly listens to it. it amazing as that may seem, uh, it's kind of a, it's not, not what the young people are listening to. Um, and it might be possible for people to say, what do you want, what do you care about that old southern stuff? By the same token, you might be, you might not be African American. You might be a white guy or a white gal. You might be a Frenchman. You might be from Switzerland. You might be an Asian girl. And you might say, yeah, I just don't have, I don't, I'm feeling like I don't have a right to play the music. Think about Nat's lesson. If you're going to play the music, you better figure out how to open your soul and play the music and give it respect and give it the best you've got. Open your hands. Open your hands. <laughs>